Hey guys, Master Zeon here. So in this video tutorial, this is a sped up version of me. Um, this is pretty much me doing director's commentary on a head that I sculpted like yesterday or day before or something. I haven't made a video in a while and I know I've been wanting to do some stuff about character modeling since that's my thing personally. I just want to be a person capable of making interesting characters. I mean, I want to make environments and cars and all that other cool stuff, but characters and people are where it's at it's like our whole life experience you know as people so i'm obsessed with them how they're built how their faces come together in the forms and shapes so i start out with a with a cube that i subdivided you know w subdivide with all selected um, then control shift s to turn the sphere with a value of one to get it to be a, a polysphere basically enable B surfaces, I'm not going to use it for a while, screencast. I don't have any of my external applications like GIMP put into this version since 2.65 uh, just came out. This version I think is better than ever. You know, lately Blender has really, really began hitting hard with these updates. I mean, from the days of the motion tracker to B mesh to cycles, and now fur is a part of cycles and hair. So, I mean... At some point in this video, you'll see me actually get to the hair portion, but it does start out a little slow, so we'll speed that up. I assume that y'all at least understand GSR, grab scale, rotate, rotate, and, you know, all of that. So there's no use explaining that. It's more interesting, I think, to discuss the technique behind it all. Um, so first thing I try to do is get to line up with the images, delete half of it, just collapsed them into one vert and deleted it. And so just in certain loop cuts, got to get the shape of the eyes. You know, most of this stuff is pretty basic, but it's the, the workflow that I'm using here. So I start off with this nasty sphere, or not nasty, nice polysphere. Uh, that I begin to shape to look like the head, get the features in, then I'll retopologize because, you know, Blender has such special topology features built in, you might as well use it. So the first thing, of course, is to establish the skull. I've been doing a lot of 2D drawing, as you can see, so I've been trying to get to the root of what it is to establish form and whatnot, because I think these are lessons that I may have hurriedly skipped, and they might be crippling me in my endeavors to become the 3D master. But I've already watched this about six times, so I'm not so enthusiastic about it now. I'm just glad that this will be the last time I have to watch it due to director's commentary, add music, put it on YouTube. But we're going to take this all the way, make a full-on character. So just kick back and this will really start to pick up. So the reference images are just really a placeholder. I'm not really modeling the person you're seeing. I just need the human shape and forms to just be there, which I've experimented with drawing all that myself with the crease pencil, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you get the shape from as long as you are going after the, as long as you, I guess, acquire the form that you're intending to go for. So it's going to start out looking rough for a pretty good while, so we'll speed this up. The eyes are definitely a unique shape. Whenever we get down to the re-examination on the, what I call level two uh, shaping of the model, you'll really start to see these forms become very defined and sharp. Um, I've been debating on using my standard pr 
uh, my standard program that I use for all these things, like character development, in place of Blender, because I actually don't use Blender as much as I used to. But I mean, Blender is getting so good that you know why leave it for anything? Like I, I want to experiment and you know try out Houdini and Maya, but from what I've seen in the videos, I just I don't know about those interfaces. I mean, they are very nice programs and definitely are far more capable than this one. But, you know, Blender's a, a program that if you think hard enough, you can acquire what it is you're after. There's a workaround to acquire every illusion that you would possibly want to create in CG. So with the face, of course, you know, there's small rules. You know, the nose is built up of three spheres. Um, the lips... The top lip goes over the bottom lip. And then there's also the dimple in the corner of the mouth, as well as the bulge above the top lip in the corner. Now, these are specific features that I tend to emphasize on quite a bit whenever I'm sculpting or modeling. And you're probably listening to me thinking, you know, we're not even at that part yet, or why, why does that even matter? But I mean, these are the things that really define the form of the the character and give it that that shadowing that those bulges in the right area that indicates that there's muscle and bone there and I see in way too many videos that it'll just get to what I call level one and they'll just start painting the hell out of it it's a hideous model and they'll become fed up with it so my goal is to try to make more unique looking characters, not so much base messes anymore. But it's easier said than done, as you'll see throughout this video. Right now, the sex is still, in my head, fairly androgynous. So I'm not sure on whether or not it's going to be a male or a female. But at the point that I am in practicing, I'm actually working on a female character. But I think I might actually stick with a male for this and just go for like a youthful boy type of look. Um... Every time that you see a break in a video, that's someone instant messaging me. You'll see it flashing to show that I'm talking to them or whatever. But, you know, from lately I've been pretty busy. I took a three-week break off of 3D to just, I guess, step back and examine the canvas, really analyze my strategy and take a long, hard look at my renders. With the head, it's all fairly basic. You know what I'm doing. I'm just adding loop cuts indiscriminately, almost, because everything's swooping around the head in the most hideous way. So I can't deal with the line work. I mean, I could have tried to be brilliant and manage the final mesh from the same base mesh. But it's a lot easier to not and just get the basic shapes, get the proportions in, just get the planar details of the planar face, and then just come back and emphasize on it. Now, if you're using Blender and you have any expectations, of course, of getting anywhere in the professional industry, then, you know, stop right now and go look into some more commercialized software. Me, personally, I want to learn the theory of 3D all out of Blender and then just translate it into another package while just learning the workflow differences between using different softwares. But... In Blender, I've developed quite a few, or not developed, learned quite a few techniques on doing the same thing. And it also translates into all aspects of modeling. I guess this type of modeling is would be considered box modeling, which during retopology, it would become more of a planar type modeling, which then goes to sculpting. So you could have started off with just a cube and just sculpted it until it got to the shape, but I find that rather difficult and more work. And with vertices, you get a lot of control. Couple that with the tools, like the proportional editing and snapping, and you actually have a pretty good arsenal in your array for making anything that you envision. See my McAfee's popping up. It's actually expired now, so so much for that. I need to figure out what I'm going to do about antivirus. I've been using a Mac so long I forgot about it, so B-Mesh didn't work. Turned all my lines into curves. But this is the part where I'm going to begin, you know, laying out the more finalized geometry for this mesh. Because as you see, this looks pretty messed up. 
B mesh I really want to like. It may not be mesh. Um, B surfaces I really want to like and make of use um, for modeling. But really I find that sometimes it's actually more work to get it to get in the mindset of using it than it is to actually get the use out of the tools. So right here I just actually have snapping turned on with that magnet set to face. And then that last icon actually makes it project all onto whatever mesh is underneath. So when it comes to retopology, this is very, very fast. Like I used to retopologize in ZBrush. I even tried 3D Coat and tried Topo Gun, which after reading the instruction manuals and getting used to the programs, it just was more work than needed. I mean, everybody, of course, you know, wants to get fast, nice topology. But I mean, if you look at these, you know, these renders that are in these forums that are just out there and the wires are just impeccable. This is how it's done, but we are doing a retopology of a not so perfect form here. I mean, we could have sculpted it and got it to look better and then redone done this whole thing, but as you see, I got a plan in mind for it. And we're only 11 minutes into the video, so hopefully I'm not doing too bad on y'all's attention span, just trying to keep the dialogue happening here. When it comes to geometry, you want to avoid, I guess, diagonals and, and stretch geometry. So you want to keep everything fairly equal. So a lot of the extra stuff that you see me add, C loops and whatnot, are to ensure even distribution of the geometric wealth that is in this picture. So, of course, we get the uh, mouth nasal loop. And of course, the loop that encompasses the whole nose. These are basic Blenderella modeling <laughs> workflow. Trace the lips. This is actually one of my favorite stages of modeling now is retopologizing because the amount of control you get is like having your form. It's, it is having your form already built, and you are just projecting the adequate geometry onto it. So it's kind of rewarding in a way. But I've been a bit rusty. You step away from the computer for a couple of weeks and don't be surprised if you lose a little bit of skill. So, move my doubles. And as long as the geometry is set up in a way that mimics facial anatomy close enough. I know that my shape keys will deform properly with the proportional editing, of course, when I'm setting them up to allow, you know, more naturalistic facial expressions. But I've been experimenting with some interesting tools that I never ever even looked at before, like the like the weight tool modifiers. Um, and their initial purpose is to aid in deformation. Like, you know, there's stages in which you're bending that you wish that your weight painting could be manipulated a little bit to make it a lot, little easier for the deforming. And I see that there's tools actually available for that that I need to start adding in. Because, you know, we're modeling these characters. This guy's not going to get me a job. None of these guys are. But it is all part of my overall vision of someday making, you know, music videos to bunch of classic songs that I like that I think need music videos. So with the face trace, it gets a little bit easier to make the rest of it. And by just having them evened out, I know I can take care of any of the smoothing that comes from the unnecessary rump, uh, rough bumpiness of the underlying mesh that we're tracing here. But let's focus, focus. And the theme that I'm using for Blender is actually the Moto theme. Moto is another program that I personally find interesting and would love to uh, give a try to sometime. But, you know, learning all your tools again makes you a noob again, and I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. I've spent a long time trying to become good at Blender. But who knows, you keep watching, you might see a technique you've never seen before. But, I mean, all these modeling styles, you see, you know, Blender Cookie and um, Blender Guru, and they all make tutorials, and they aim for a special type of 
type of group of people. Like I think uh, Blender Blender Guru is actually my personal favorite. Andrew Price is a genius, um, and he has a you know a charming presentation when it comes to his videos and has a professional appeal to it. But I mean, they're definitely aimed at you know special effects, imitating realism. Um, nowadays with cycles, it's dedicated all towards realism, I think. Um, but these are all styles, not so much techniques, but styles of thinking, or at least in my opinion, they are. So I'm just adding loop cuts, stretching across the head, you know, there ain't much to narrate on that. Got to get that even distribution, especially for the front of the head. Continue stretching the geometry around the head. Once you start closing the back of the head, you start to really get a sense of accomplishment, knowing that you're almost done with this. Begin closing up the front, try to lay in some of the geometric shapes that I know kind of represent the muscle forms that are in the area. That's kind of how I guide my geometry. I know the geometry for this isn't absolutely perfect. Like, I see some areas in the cheek that are just absolute eyesores, as well as some areas in the back of the head. So just know that I do come through and I clean this thing up very nice. We end up with a very polished mesh by the end of this. And even where this video ends so far... It um, isn't even the beginning. It's just us getting the head to even play with. And we could just take it wherever we want from there. And see, when you watch me do it like this, you know, geomet geometry and modeling, it's all just a big puzzle, you know. You're just trying to pull it to get to look like what you see in your head. So, a lot of times, or at least when I first started using Blender, I used to do what they call free modeling, where you just go in and just start with a cube and no thoughts and just try to make stuff. And that used to work for me when I first looked at this program as more as some sort of sandboxing app or something but now I, I need a plan I need an idea whenever I come in I need a specific purpose for why I open Blender I wouldn't open Microsoft Word without you know an idea on why I opened this program I mean you know typing documents is boring and you know there's not a lot of purpose you can add to that but still I know why I went into it and so in this video when I opened it my intention was to make a person. That's it. I didn't know anything else beyond that. Didn't know if it was male or female. Just kind of went on Google Images, found a picture of a boy that looked like he followed the proportion rules that are um, general among drawing, you know, like just those anatomy guidelines for when you're sketching people that they hold you to. And just try to apply that towards my 3D modeling.
So when I go into perspective mode with 5, you see it looks all distorted. When I go in camera view, things look even worse. That's because I accidentally held control and pressed numpad 0 when I had my mesh selected. And with no active camera in the scene, I'm not able to just set that to be back to camera. So it's also got my view viewport perspective off as well. So it's probably set to like 4 or something, something horrible that makes my guy look like he is the tunnel. Um or that tunneling effect, as I call it. But I'll correct that. So I add in an air. I do love being able to come into Blender, drop an image plane as an object, <coughs> and just start modeling that. So here I drop in the air. The air is, you know, one of the most painful things to model on a person. And to be honest, I actually modeled one decent air, and I've been using it for about six months now. And so now I've been trying to actually make some new airs to add to my stock library because one air can't roll them all. Add a plane, delete a plane, draw some grease pencil strokes, and make a surface of it. By moving it, I lost my ability to remove the cross. So we should try that again. Now I can lower my cross. So B Services does have some very good usage. I just haven't worked out a good workflow for it yet. And all in the air, you know, the shape is there. You have the idea. You see the depth. You know that this ring I'm dealing with is the outermost ring and that everything inside of that is below it or inside of it or is beginning to go inside. So I used to actually dread airs until finally... Um, I watched a video where Jonathan Williamson was talking about how fun it was. And, you know, modeling is supposed to be easy if you're a pro. I guess it's supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be this enormous amount of strain. You're not supposed to get stressed and mad at your application. You know, these are signs that you're probably still a noob. And I still get mad, like, oh, man, Blender's not working with me today. I can't even make a tree. You know, a tree's hard as shit to make. So, it's really about that mentality, and that's one of the things that I think I need to step away from the, the canvas and just examine. Not to mention, you know, it's, I, if I ever left Blender, I'd be completely sucked back in just with the amount of features and the frequency that they're added and how amazing they are from just casually glancing at their website. Like, Blender Nation has things every day talking about uh, developments within the program. Then every Tuesday, of course, on Blender Nation, they have the developers' minutes, which is just another one of the posts they have. So, I mean, those are very good to see as far as finding out, you know, what's happening with Blender. Still working on my air. Now I'm on level, level two of the inside. More geometric trickery. The air that I modeled here, because of the lack of definition for the interior creases that are inside of the air that make it, you know, look like it's a piece of skin flopping over another piece of skin. It actually gave me a little bit of pain sculpting where it just looked too smooth, like they had a rubber air or fake air. So I'm working on fixing that. So you'll see in the next video, I'll come back and do that. But no worries. This one gets all the way to texture painting, but not so much texture painting as a finished thing, but more as like a temporary way of just testing it out, seeing what we're working with. So the inset tool with I is one of my favorite tools now. Just press I and you can just inset polygons and create your own little perimeter C loops. So I use it all the time when modeling, so do keep that in mind. Snapping at this point is still turned off because I'm just planar modeling, basically. So we start off with a box, but for the airs, we switch to plane. But, you know, as 3D artists, we all should aim towards, you know, being like Shang Tsung, being able to just emulate the skills and the workflows and understand why they do it that way. Like, I personally like the idea of modeling ahead using just the shapes for the critical landmarks and then filling in the um, geometry via interpolation. Uh, that's also a good way that you could model. 
Um, I haven't tried it a lot myself. I've lately just been obsessed with becoming a better sculptor because with sculpting, you know, it's one step, then retopologize, then you're done if you're good enough at sculpting. But sculpting is something that it's like learning to model all over again. But I can't dare make videos about ZBrush. There's too many masters out there. They're way too good. I'd never be able to compete. And my goal on YouTube is to compete, to be, to make a video that's good enough that people would want to come see it, and not just be like those random kids I remember seeing when I started. That, like, my name's Kevin sixty nine. I'm gonna teach you how to use the fluid simulator. Like when I started Blender, it was like two point four and nine. So 2.5 was just like a pipe dream. It was just pictures. And I swore I'd never switch to this interface because I was so clingy to my 2.49. And now I realize that, you know, you can't become attached to to the old ways. You can't be, you know, resistant to change because it won't become a Neanderthal. You know, cycles became popular. I started to hate that. I can't run it. I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card. It runs slow as hell just grinds and grinds it freezes makes my computer completely lock up i can't do anything else in other windows makes my pencil lag so i can't even draw might as well just play halo if i'm rendering on the cpu with my i5 but there's no doubt about it cycles is definitely the future of blender and you know physically realistic gpu renders are basically the future of renders you know, you go, you get Maya or 3ds Max. I believe they have Mental Ray, and you just look at the Mental Ray pictures of them showing off how awesome it is, and you see that photon maps and the way that they calculate things are way different than ray tracing. Ray tracing is archaic in its definition, but you know, these are new things that people just aren't accustomed to and are against, like B-Mesh. I hated B-Mesh when it came. I was like, you know, why Why am I deleting faces and it's just neutralizing verts and still keeping faces? I didn't understand the ideology until I watched a couple of videos and of Japanese people modeling people very well using my 3DS Max. And I began to get the idea about B-Mesh pretty fast. So this head's coming together. We got the air attached. The face is looking ghoulish. But, you know, from the side, it definitely has, like, a sloopy look to it. I think the eyes need to be pulled back. The jawline's way too weak. There is no jawline. Or there is a jawline, but it's just too soft. It's like a fat face. And we're at almost 30 minutes in a video, so we're still not doing too bad making mad progress. So now from here, this is part two. So this is something I actually just recorded yesterday. So eventually I want to come back and do a video about, you know, facial features and how they insinuate things about the face, how you can you know, by pulling out the jawbone or the cheekbone, that you can get certain looks by pulling in the um, by pulling in the lining around the eyes, not so much around the eyes, but just that rim of the uh, perimeter loop, that you can start to insinuate, you know, exhaustion and tiredness and um, go for age looks versus uh, you know completely young ones and. These are things that I haven't seen videos on that I think would be interesting to cover. Because um, for the most part, renders now, videos now are all about how to make this specific thing. I mean, the technique's there for you to learn, of course, and you could translate to something else. But, you know, maybe not so much on the ideology as much. And that's just where Blender videos, I think, lack, in my opinion, is that they don't explain the ideological approach to modeling. I mean, Blender Cookie does through its um, 
through its uh, master modeling workshop, but you know, that thing's like $300. We're downloading free software. Why are we paying for all these tutorials? So, you know, it's, it's, I think it's ruining the community almost. Like, I guess you got to make a living somehow if you're dedicated enough to this program. But it seems like a pyramid scheme. You download the software and then learn all the cool stuff. You need to buy a bunch of stuff. But there will always be free content. And as long as the program's free, I can just live with that. And that's the line. That's the line that I feel is needed in the face to... Just to find the fatty part right below it, as well as the uh, sunken area of the skull that all that uh, muscle and skin is resting on. And these are things that I used to not keep in mind until someone opened my eyes to it. So through this video, hopefully I can show you all some of the things in the face that you know I personally feel bring realism to it and doesn't give you such a... This, for example, this model right now, if we just take a real good hard look at it, it has a smooth clone baby look. There's no chiseled specific features. There's no hardness in any of it. And so, therefore, he looks fake. You know, the eye, air, side, complex, we will just leave alone. But, you know, even the rest, even the nose, the nostril hole being too small, the fact that there's too many loops there, all these things take away from the realism of it. As well as, you know, the skin tones lacking variations like sunspots and dark areas and moles and um, just the variations of the red and pinks in the eyes and the yellows on the bridge of the nose and the fringe pink on the lips. Like, these are all just random things that I just think of off the top of my head that I have to remind myself whenever, you know, I'm making something that it, they're present. You know, this has been a pretty long talking video. I haven't talked to my YouTube following in a while. So hopefully I don't get a bunch of hate mail saying that I sound like I'm bored. I'm not bored. I'm kind of bored. I just got out of work. I also watched this video about four times. <laughs>
but continuing on so I put a lattice in just to try to have some fun with it just play with features see what I can accomplish mauling with lattices is something that I seem to forget because it's a powerful tool it allows you some real good spline warping of you know complex objects similar to simple deform for um, you know controlling an armature right here I'm selecting these for I me mean, I'm selecting these faces making them a separate selection making them a wire turning on retopologize and now I already have the planar already have the form set but the topology the topology unacceptable has to be fixed somewhat like I said I, did, I go through a lot of tweaking on this to get the final even distribution of ge geometry because you know we want our maps to look good too I plan on making this a pretty darn good render so right now you see it looks all bad but by part two I think it'll look a lot more impressive So right here, I'm having to solve a mystery. How to get this geometry to go the way that I want. And the underlying piece, you know, that piece is gone. I'll delete it. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It was just a placeholder for me to correct my geometry. I don't know about that loop. I might have to do something about that one. So continuing on, gonna try to smooth out the nose and get a more specific shape in there. Definitely hate those nostrils, but now I'm just gonna play with some texturing. Sometimes I like to just take a break from the modeling once I get it to a decent stage and just see, you know, what I can do with the texturing. But like I said, we need a sharper form here. We need a more specific form. unwrap and so we see that the body takes up a lot of this UV layout so I'm just selecting this I'm gonna scale it with proportional editing scale it up and just try to compress it some we'll merge the mouse so that way there's no confusion with that later on so my strategy is to create a UV cut it in half mirror it paint half do half the work get it near finished then make a full UV again cut it out I mean make a full UV bake both halves and then add my symmetry which will then add you know the final charms to the character but you know it's still too early to talk about that but as you can see now I got a pretty nice UV layout apply to subserve go into this apply to dirty vertex colors just give it a cavity bake And to, for this, just make the material shade. Let's make it use the vertex color paint and just bake a full render. And voila, now I have this. And I always save them as JPEGs because the PNG stack up, especially if I forget about the project. So for the face paint, I try to give myself a good start out of, um, you know, like some ramp textures over the normals and then make it shadeless, which made them disappear and got me that. So I try setting it to emit, 
which got me this artifacting. Still got me artifacting. So I'm just turning off settings for this material to see if I can get it to just work a little more in my favor. But of course it's not, just a spoiler alert. But I never give up. I was in this video, I was like, I'm going to figure this shit out. But I didn't. Didn't figure it out. In fact, ended up with this horrible texture here. Where he has a big black line in front of him. So the painting got moved. The painting is now part of the render panel when you select paint mode. But it's not accessible from the UV editor, which it used to be. Set up some lights so I can just, you know, look at them while I'm painting. So just the colors add depth and character to the model. Just by multiplying in a little bit of red, you know, I get that darkness in the face. You know, I'm looking at a picture of a person on the other screen at the same time. And so I'm not sampling their colors. I'm just looking at where they're naturally just darker at and just making those areas um, kind of match together. So you can imagine that with the right texturing, you can get pretty far just with that kind of basic idea. Make the lips pink, but fade it out a bit. We'll just save this as a color map with a one, so I know it's the first color map I export. Open up Kemp. PC freezes for a moment. Finally got Kemp. So in Kemp, you have to right click your layers and add an alpha channel if you import an image. So that's what I'm doing here, as well as making a selection, feathering it, deleting the edges, and then changing it to multiply to multiply it over it. And as you can see, the cavity mask adds some additional definition. I'm just tweaking the color to bring out a little more red and variance in the color setup, just based off of the cavity information. So I'll bring that in. I actually have a pretty decent starter map just for a half of the head that's being duplicated. And so now I just want to replace that poly, that polysphere eye with the actual UV sphere eye that's been quadded. So now I think we're actually getting near the end of the video, but I'm just looking at how the maps look. I decided I was going to use cycles for this, even though, you know, it runs kind of slow, but they've made some enhancements to it in 2.65. So I should just try it out and see how it's working now. And I actually am pretty pleased with the speed differences. And that's it. See you soon.